Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another fur tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to take our fuzzy little dinosaur, create a texture for him and then make some colored fur. So it's a pretty fun jam packed tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. I post tutorials on software like Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in making this little fuzzy creature even fuzzier. Okay, so in the last tutorial, we used subsurface scattering, we used displacement map, we even gave him a little fur, and we now want to cover him in some sort of, let's just make him super furry. So I really don't need that displacement. So let's go ahead and assign a new material and I'm going to go to Arnold AI standard surface and just give myself any color that I want. So let's go ahead and give him him or her. Uh, let's see. Okay. So this is my pink color. I'm going to leave the scales as is because the first all going to happen here. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to render it. Let's uh, increase the roughness because we don't need it to have any type of specularity. And there we go. We have this fuzzy little, little guy. So let's go ahead and take a snapshot of that. So this is what we had before. This is what we have now. And also it does not have any subsurface scattering. So to create fur, the first thing we need to do is go to the top right and then go to XGen Interactive Groom, which will take us to this, these windows, which are important because we have tools and also the attribute editor. Over here, we also have the outliner, the channel box, and the XGen interactive groom editor. We're going to go to uh, generate and we're going to create interactive groom splines. So basically, it's the same method we did to create those tiny little strands, but this time we are going to just focus on making this guy really, really fuzzy. So I'm going to reduce my width scale to 0 0.001. So it's going to be very thin, or maybe just 0 0.01. I can always go from there, change the taper. And it really depends what type of height do you want? Uh, if I go down to my scale, I can reduce, reduce my scale to about 0.5 and we can see the effect that we currently have. So not very impressive. It just looks like a bunch of spikes sticking out with tiny little hairs. And this thing, the second thing I want to do is increase my density multiplier. I am going to go pretty high. I'm going to go to 30 because I really want to make sure my little character is fuzzy. So I can definitely go fuzzier, but I'm going to just kind of keep it like this for now. The next part I want to show you guys is how to color the fur. So we've already UV mapped this character in a previous tutorial. So let's export the UV snap. So image UV snapshot, and I'm going to browse and it's going to um, export it in here. I actually already exported it, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys how to do that. Make sure you name it. I chose a TIFF and then I also chose a 2048 map. That's going to give me in Photoshop a UV map. Now I can't see it. So let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on this little new layer back here and let's fill it with black. So now I can see my UV map. Next, it's up to you how you want to color this. So for example, do you want your dinosaur to be kind of pink? Maybe, maybe I'll go for blue this time. So let's go for blue and I'm going to fill it that one layer blue. And then it really depends what you want. So I have a brush and let's say I want to give this little guy maybe some orange dots, orange yellow dots. So this is the front of his head. This is his tail. So I might actually go in and just give some big, like maybe a big dot. Then I'm going to bracket down to a smaller dot and then bracket down and then bracket down some more. So now I've got a, a range of dots. Uh, this is his body. So if I want, maybe I can just add, and again, I'm just kind of winging it here. Just a couple of lines here. Or maybe I'll just do a big line, whoop, something like that. It's not perfect by all means. I'm just kind of quickly drawing this, but hopefully you guys get it the idea. And then this is the front of its head. So I might actually add some dots as well. So maybe I'll add some here, make some smaller ones as it goes down. And then same thing for this one. I can go here and then slowly go down. Maybe I can add a big dot back here, another one here, and another one here. 
Should I do some little ones for his legs too? Well, let's just leave it like this. Okay, so this looks good enough for me. Again, I can really add way more things actually. Let me just add a little bit of color by selecting this color and just making it slightly darker, creating a new layer. And I'm just going to use a soft brush because I can't do anything halfway and just kind of paint in a little bit of color. Just a little bit, nothing major. Maybe some in the back, just a little, just a little soft brush. It's not going to be perfect by all means, but at least it'll be interesting. Let me grab an eraser and just to clean this up. Uh, let me get the feet. I don't need the feet to have color. Okay, I think I think that's okay. Okay. All right, let's remove the UVs. Let's go file save as. And I'm going to choose a TIFF, which is perfect. I'm going to call this Diner Color, whoops, Diner Color 2, because I was just messing around earlier. And then go ahead and save. I'm going to say none. And click OK. To, to be honest, I don't need all these layers. So if you want to, you guys can just flatten the image, which will discard it. And then just make sure you're in the TIFF and then save. So the file is just going to be significantly smaller if you just flatten out all the layers. All right, let's hop into Maya. And my little pink dinosaur is now going to turn into a blue dinosaur. So let's go to our attribute editor, which is a pink shader. That's what I called it. Now I'm going to call it the blue shader. And in color, I'm going to click on this little output, type in file. I got an error, so let me double check. check. So they didn't like that. Let me go back one. Let me select this guy. Try again. File, folder. And let's go to our images and grab the dino color too. So now it looks something like this. I should have painted the legs, but oh well. Okay, so that's the base color. Let's go back to our hair definition. And over here to the right, you'll see a physical shader. What we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to grab the file and plug in the color. And I'm going to do this. Well, actually, let me just show you what it looks like right now. So you can see that the color of the bottom of the fur is being picked up, but the tip color is not. So what we want to do is actually add the tip color as well. So I'm going to take a really rough image there. And I think I accidentally moved my camera. That's too bad. Let me just lock it. So I don't move it again. And let's go to perspective. Okay, so the nice thing is that it this gives us a preview. So we're going to do the same thing for the tip color. We're going to go ahead and grab the file and we're going to go to images and grab the diner color too. So you can see that um, if you want to, you guys can change the tip color as well, but I'm okay with it being all a consecutive color. So now we have a super fuzzy blue spotted dinosaur. Now I can definitely do more. So for example, let me go back here and I just want to make sure my tip color and everything is some sort of white so it doesn't look or you can even change it to a different color if you want like a little bit more orangey or yellow but let's look at the description of our object so right now my description and my multiplier needs to be a lot more so I'm going to change it to like a 50 because I really want to make this little dinosaur fuzzy I also want to go in and change the scale I just wanted to make it a little bit less um, noticeable. And I might actually go back to my multiplier and go a little crazy and just go 80. I really want them to be fuzzy. <laughs> so the more fur it has, the longer it's going to render, but the cuter it's going to be. I'm going to hide the hands because I feel like they're distracting. So let me hide those. All right, he's looking really fuzzy. It's starting to look really cute compared to what it was before. So this is what it looked like with the fur and this, I mean, the subsurface and the knitted stuff and now he looks like a little fuzzy ball which is super cute um let's work on the little uh, wandering hairs there so let's go to my hyper shade and we have a hair physical which is the one that has the pink and i'm going to actually change those to more like a blue because now we have more of a blue character so I think it's going to help to just make the root blue and maybe a little bit darker blue um, and then the tip color can remain white which is great 
The other thing I wanted to show you guys is that if you want to make it look a little bit more um, realistic, I would recommend that you choose an add modifier and add a noise. So this is going to really scrunch the fur and I'm going to reduce the magnitude so it's not that extreme, but it still is going to give it an extra personality to the fur. So this is what I have now. Let's take a look at it. So I'm not going to render the whole thing, just this. So let's take a look at it. And there we go. Let's take a look at what it was before. It was very even. Now it's looking a little bit more scruffy in the corners and it definitely looks a little bit more realistic, which is awesome. If you guys want to push this a little bit further, uh, you'll notice that, you know, the fur is a little bit even. You can add a scale modifier. And oops, let me stop that. I'm going to grab scale one. So you'll notice that this is the original scale, which has a 0.3. And then this new modifier has a scale of one. What I can do is actually plug in a map and instead and choose noise. So just not regular noise, not AI noise, but just regular noise. And what that does is that it attaches a black and white image and creates a uh, diverse. It basically diversifies the fur so it's not so perfectly even. All right, let's compare before and after and it looks a little clumpy. So what we're going to do next is increase the frequency so that there is a lot more dots. And since it has more noise information, you it will actually break up the texture even more. So actually, let me add more frequency. And I'm also going in and going into color balance and just kind of calming down the black a little bit. All right, he's looking really cute and realistic because the text, the fur is not exactly perfect. So that's basically what we want is a little bit of that imperfectness of being a real toy. All right, I think that's looking pretty nice. Let's compare what we had before. We started with this, then we ended with that. We added some noise and now we have this fuzzy little guy. So super cute. Let's go ahead and render the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and let it render. Um, I'm gonna keep it like this for now. I will increase the render. Don't forget that you know you should create a higher quality render such as HD 720 and up, crank up all the values. Uh, we go over that in the previous tutorial if you guys are wondering how I created those little stragglers, I just created a another description. So it's not available here, but I have a different collection, which uses um, a different type of X Gen, but it's the same, basically the same idea. So take a look at that in the previous tutorial. Um, if you guys want to continue using the X Gen Interactive Toolkit, what you can do is just go to, uh, you just do the same thing. So actually, let me show you guys really fast because I have a feeling people are going to ask. Uh, just go to, actually, let me see if I can just delete this collection. There we go. So that gets rid of that little fur. And what you can do is create another, you can generate another one. So let's create another, oops, got to select the mesh, generate an interactive groom. So same story. I'm going to just blaze through this really fast. I'm going to go to zero one. I'm going to taper it. I am going to go to the scale and reduce it. I am going to plug in a noise so that I can diversify the length with using frequency. So you can see it's kind of funny looking at it like this. Um, I have another description here, right? So I'm going to add a little bit of noise. I'm going to go back to my description and reduce my density because I don't need so many. Grab density two and let's move all the way to the right until I get to the hair physical, which I'm going to change to a dark blue and then a white. So the tips are, or you can go light blue, I guess. Let's go light blue. And if you want, I think I'm going to increase my frequency here. So it's a little bit fuzzier on my noise. And yeah, that's basically how you can create your own, your second description of interactive XGen description. I think I have too many. I'm going to go back into my density multiplier and change this to 0.3. And then I'm going to go to back to the noise. And before I forget, I need to reduce the gain. There we go. All right, let's render. And I'm going to let this render and I will be right back. 
And there you have it. We now have a cute fuzzy dinosaur. So instead of using textures to create like a knitted look, we now have a really fuzzy one. Oh, and we also created maps to give the fur color. And we also used a bunch of modifiers to give it a more realistic look. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. If you guys like these videos and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you guys like these type of videos and that you want to see more. And if you have any suggestions on videos, I'm all ears. Feel free to put it in the comments below as well. Uh, don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That is my website where you can find free ebooks, free downloads, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Just a lot of free resources just for you. Thank you so much for being here and working on this cute little dinosaur with me. It's a lot of fun. I think he's adorable and um, and he definitely looks cute with his little <laughs> fuzzy exterior. Again, thank you so much. Keep creating and I will see you next time.